forensics, the process of investigation, and the collection of um, evidence, setting up Python for forensics uh, application development, then built-in functions and modules for forensic tasks, forensic indexing and searching, hash functions for forensics, forensic evidence extraction, then metadata forensics, and finally using natural language tools for forensics. And finally, I'll be summarizing my talk. So let us first look at uh, a few cyber crime uh, statistics. The Internet Crime Report for 2019, released by USA's Internet Crime Complaint Center of Federal Bureau of Investigation, has revealed top four countries. So, of course, you can see some numbers here, but these are only the reported numbers. Unreported numbers can be much higher. So, according to RSA report, mobile transactions are rapidly growing and uh, cyber criminals are migrating to less protected uh, soft channels. Uh, that is because many people are not aware of uh, different settings available in the uh, mobile devices. Then, according to an article uh, published in Indian Express, uh, over 55% of millennials in India are hit by the uh, cyber crime. So millennials are those people who are born between 1995 and uh, 2010. They are gadget friendly, so they are going to use or they use gadgets heavily. So obviously they are the uh, targets. Then a recent study by Checkpoint Research has recorded over uh, more than 150,000 cyber attacks every week uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. There has been uh, an increase of 30% uh, in cyber attacks compared to previous weeks. Now let us uh, define uh, forensics first. So forensic science is the use of uh, scientific methods or expertise to investigate crimes or examine evidence uh, that might be presented in a court of law. So cyber forensics is investigation of various crimes happening in the cyberspace. So basically, uh, cyber criminals use different digital tools so for the investigation we are also going to use uh, uh, digital tools then examples of cyber attacks include phishing ransomware fake news fake medicine extortion and also the insider frauds so we know that during pandemic a lot of messages were circulated and most of them were fake they may be fake news and also related information related to the fake medicine and insider frauds are also very uh, important. Uh, we know that there may be many unhappy employees and uh, they may turn into uh, cyber criminals. Then according to DFRWS, that is Digital Forensics Research uh, Workshop, it can be defined as the use of uh, scientifically derived and proven method toward the preservation, collection, validation, identification, analysis, interpretation documentation and presentation of digital evidence derived from uh, digital sources for the purpose of facilitating or furthering the reconstruction of um, events found to be criminal or helping to anticipate uh, unauthorized actions shown to be disruptive to the planned operations so now here if you look at the definition there are two parts one uh, speaks about the different uh, steps which the investigation officer need to carry out during the investigation process and second one it focuses on the importance of um, presenting the evidence in the court of law now there are uh, basically six steps uh, in digital forensics investigation first one is the identification then collection then validation examination preservation and presentation so we will look at each of these steps one by one so in identification what happens is uh, the investigation officer visits the crime location and the officer is going to identify the different objects. So these objects may consist of uh, evidence. So these objects may include laptop, uh, mobile phone, smart gadgets, smart watches, and even the cables. And there may be uh, toy pen drives, so which look like toys, but uh, so but they are pen drives. So such objects may be missed out. So the investigation officer needs to identify such objects. Then once the objects are identified, the investigation officer needs to collect them and put it in a uh, anti-static bags or uh, FADA bags. 
in order to preserve the evidence the next is the uh, validation uh, note here that you are not going to perform uh, uh, investigation on the original data so when we are identifying the information when we are identifying the evidence we also need to identify the uh, clues or information or evidence in software so we need to collect the data so what they usually do is they take the snapshot of the entire disk so they will not perform uh, uh, validation or any examination on the original data so they will perform it on uh, copy of the data so they will compare the original uh, uh, data and the copy of the data so as to ensure that nothing has changed so this can be achieved by using uh, hash algorithms the next is the examination so it is the examination step where the evidence is identified then once the evidence is identified then you need to preserve it so you need to preserve it preserve the hard disk at the appropriate uh, temperature in a locked room with appropriate uh, security measures then finally the presentation so presentation is nothing but the producing the collected evidence in the court of law and there is something called as uh, dobert standard uh, so in united states uh, federal law the dobert standard is a rule of evidence regarding the admissibility of uh, expert witness uh, testimony so a party may raise a dobert motion a special motion in limine raised before or during trial to exclude the presentation of uh, unqualified evidence to the jury so there are some illustrative uh, uh, factors so the court defined the scientific methodology as the process of formulating uh, hypothesis then conducting experiments to prove or falsify the hypothesis so these illustrative factors uh, include has the technique been uh, tested in actual uh, field conditions and not just in the laboratory has the technique been subject to peer review and publication what is the uh, known or potential rate of error do standards exist for control of the technique's operation has the technique been generally accepted within the relevant scientific community now dobert standard and python are closely related because there is a study carried out by brian carrier so he published a paper that examined the rules of evidence standards so that is including dobert and compared and contrasted the open source and closed source forensic tools so one of his key conclusions was using the guidelines of the dobert test we have shown that the open source tools may more clearly and comprehensively meet the guideline requirements than would closed source tools so the results are not automatic of course so just because the source is open so rather than specific steps must be followed regarding the design development and validation now what is the meaning here is the open source tools satisfy dobert standard than closed source tools so since python is open source so it obviously satisfies the dobert standard so some questions which needs to be asked whenever we are using python and to check whether it conforms to dobert standard are can the program or algorithm be explained uh, this explanation should be explained in words not only in the in, in terms of code because judge will not understand the code has the enough information been provided such that thorough tests can be developed to test the program have error rates been calculated and validated independently has the program been studied and peer reviewed so has the program been generally accepted uh, by the community so you can refer the book mentioned here uh, that is python forensics by uh, chet hosmer for more information the next uh, important uh, topic is setting up python for forensic application development so there are many factors one is your background and your organization support uh, so are you good in uh, python whether your organization supports open source um, uh, work the next is choosing uh, third party libraries so there are many third party libraries you will find and which will help you to achieve your task but the problem is some may be compatible with your uh, present version of uh, python and some may not be compatible so in that case you need to install multiple versions of python maybe you need to 
have separate containerized installations uh, to carry out the task then using ids and their features so always using ids will help you to write the code uh, faster then installation so here you have again uh, multiple options you can install your favorite operating system maybe windows or linux or macintosh or you may go for virtual machine or you may uh, also go for cloud then write version of python so as i have said that write version of python is very very important because um, you may go for third party libraries and to execute the code you may have to you may need the right version of python the next one is graphical versus uh, shell so many times uh, many people prefer uh, graphical if they are beginners and geeks may prefer uh, shell because they will achieve more and more customization options are available with uh, shell now built-in functions and modules now uh, when we are considering python as a forensic uh, tool or forensic application development tool uh, you can see here that there are many built-in functions we need not have to write our own uh, built-in functions so many times just using built-in functions we can achieve our uh, goal so say for example in this application you can see here we have used the inbuilt functions such as range and append which are uh, inbuilt functions we are just generating the uh, set of um, ip addresses here so we are generating the local ip addresses so which begins from 127.0.0.0 to 127.0.0.10 so similarly here to list the files and directories in a particular directory i am importing the os module then we are using get cwd function that is get the current working directory then list dir function we are using where we are passing the path of a present working directory as a parameter to list directory function so it, it just prints the uh, folders and uh, files in the present directory the next is forensic indexing and uh, searching so you can use simple file search and uh, index function so what happens in file search is you will be having a text and you need to find out the frequency of each words maybe you may have to index the uh, words so that can be achieved by using uh, simple file search and index functions okay so you can see here on the left hand side there is a code uh, where there's a variable called a search words which is nothing but a set and some keywords are stored in a text file then for each line in file words we are checking whether uh, the word is uh, uh, present so if python word is present in search words then we are saying that word is found otherwise we are saying that not found it's a very simple application but it can be used to find out some key insights say for example if we are looking for some evidence so we can just check whether those words are present in 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 particular location in particular file And if you want some advanced features then you can go for whoosh so basically using whoosh you are building your own uh, google like uh, search engine so it was created and is maintained by matt and it is originally created for the use of uh, using the online help system of side effects then it's a pythonic api then it it is pure python library again so fielded indexing and search features are supported then fast indexing and retrieval is possible then it supports also powerful uh, query language so how it works is first you are going to import the required uh, modules such as create in and fields then next you are going to add the paths of uh, different files so you can see here there's a function called as add document and add document takes the parameters as title and the content then once you add once the urls are added then you are going to use the query parser module right so where you are going to search for some keywords okay so if those keywords are present then you are going to say that yes the particular keyword is present at the particular location the next is um, hash functions for forensics so 
as I have said that you can use hash functions for um, validation of the data. So first you can import the hashlib uh, library, then you can uh, the, okay, so then what we are doing here is we are creating a message M and we are using SHA-256 um, algorithm. Then in this case, we are defining a sentence, say Python is and it's a great programming language. So we have split the sentence into two part message. Then we are computing the digest on this message. Then similarly, we are uh, using another message called as X. So again, we are computing the digest on the same sentence. So content is same, but this time we have a single part uh, sentence. So when we compare x dot digest is equal to m dot digest. So if it is true, then that means the data is same. So in the in the next example, what I have done is I have added one uh, additional uh, space. Okay. So because of that, uh, the digests are different and it is giving the false message. The next is uh, forensic evidence extraction. So for that, we are going to use some uh, functions such as pillow. So it is, which is nothing but a image processing uh, library. So it's a Python imaging library. It adds image processing capabilities to the Python interpreter. So this library provides extensive file format support and efficient internal representation and fairly powerful image processing capabilities. So for example, you can use uh, exif tags and you can extract the information about the image. Say for example, if you want to extract the file properties, then you can just say tags.items and print the exif tags. So it will print the different file properties associated with an image. Then if you want GPS tags, that is location information, lat latitude and longitude information, then you can go for GPS tags. Then if you want both, then you can import uh, both the modules, that is tags and GPS tags. So it will extract uh, both file properties as well as uh, location information. Next is the Pi screenshot. So it tries to allow to take screenshots without installing third-party libraries. It's a cross-platform, but uh, mainly used for Linux-based distributions. It supports even Python 2.7 and Python 3.0 versions also. Now the important point to note here is that performance is the not the target for this library, but you can benchmark the possible settings and choose the fastest one. Okay. So here the goal is to extract the evidence without uh, tampering. So that is very, very important. Now this is a code. So what it does is it takes the screenshot of the entire screen. So here, uh, first you need to uh, import pi screenshot module, then use uh, grab method, then use the save method to save the screenshot. Now you can also specify the uh, x1, y1, and x2, uh, y2, that is the part of the screen. You can specify the location on the screen, that is from uh, top left corner to the bottom right corner and it can take the screenshot only of the specified area. Now those who are interested in performance, uh, they can check the performance. So here n equal to 10 means it's the performance for taking 10 screenshots. So you can see a different uh, timings and you can choose the lesser one. So in order to improve the performance, you can set child process parameter to zero. You can also make some additional uh, settings such as uh, backend equal to scrot and uh, similarly backend is equal to MSS and set child process equal to false. So this will improve the performance of your application. But generally it is not required in case of forensics because the focus is on evidence extraction. The next is the metadata uh, forensics. So in this case, we are going to um, extract the information of uh, different types of files. So we are going to extract information about audio file, video file, PDF files, etc. 
and also the portable executable file so here mutagen is a python module which can be used to handle audio metadata so we know that there are different formats for audio files mp3 mp4 org verbis etc etc so if you want to extract the information related to the audio file then you can use mutagen library okay so here um, you can see here that we are importing the mutagen library and we are extracting the information about information of org file so here it says that the format is org verbis then the duration and the bits per second then similarly you can extract the information for flag file you can extract the information for um, mp3 file so you need to import the appropriate module here and pass the appropriate file and you will be able to get the information about those files then similarly if you want information about pdf files then you can go for uh, py pdf2 uh, module again which is a pure python library which is built as a built as a pdf uh, toolkit and it is capable of uh, extracting document information such as title author size when it was created when it was modified etc etc then splitting documents page by page then merging documents page by page then cropping pages then merging multiple uh, pages into single page then encrypting and uh, decrypting uh, pdf files so it's a useful tool for websites that manage or manipulate uh, pdfs the next is uh, pe file so pe file stands for portable executable uh, file and it's a multi-platform uh, python module to parse and work with portable executable files so most of the information contained in the pe file headers is uh, accessible as well as the sections details and the data so the structures defined in the windows header files will be accessible as attributes in the pe instance so you can only perform windows related uh, forensics here windows os related forensics here okay so pe file requires some basic understanding of the layout of the pe file with it it is possible to explore nearly every single feature of the pe file format so using metadata forensics some of the tasks that makes pe file uh, makes possible are the inspecting the headers analyzing of the sections of the data retrieving embedded data then reading strings from resources warning for suspicious and malformed values then overwriting fields then packer detection then pr signature generation and so on the next is the using uh, natural language uh, uh, tools so here in this case uh, uh, now this is the uh, modern uh, technology where you can apply natural language processing tools as well as machine learning and data science tools for examining the evidence or to get more useful um, information about the evidence or maybe to establish the relationship between different pieces of evidence okay so here um, in this case there are different libraries so if you are co considering nlp concepts then there are libraries such as nltk spacey and textacy so these are most popular popular nlp tools so of course they work predominantly on english language but they also support some of the western languages so textacy is built on top of spacey which supports more uh, text processing uh, features then next is the stanza and polyglot so these are the uh, most widely used nlp libraries if you want to work with uh, multilingual uh, data so multilingual data or cross-lingual data so many times what happens is the information is written using more than one human language okay so basically for example uh, we know that uh, most of the people know the english language but their mother tongue or father tongue will be different okay so they write uh, script in their uh, mother tongue or father tongue but using the english script so in that case transliteration and uh, translation needs to be performed in order to identify the correct information okay so in that case we need to go for uh, machine learning techniques 
along with NLP concepts. Then there are some li libraries such as INLTK or Indic NLP. So these are the Python libraries which work specifically with Indian languages. Okay. But Stanza is a language which supports um, 60 plus languages and Polyglot supports more than 150 languages around the world. So in summary, I can say that it is very important to follow the standard procedure led by law enforcement agencies during investigation process. That is because if you don't follow the standard procedure, then court will not accept the evidence. Then there are many open source uh, as well as commercial tools for digital forensics. So learning to develop your own tool is always advantageous. One, you need not have to depend on the commercial tools. Second one, it will improve your skills of developing your own tools. So it's always um, advantageous. Then many tools written in Python are pure Python implementation. So you need not have to go for additional uh, uh, libraries. And most importantly, Python and open source tools comply with Dauber standard, which is very, very important. So thank you everyone for attending my talk. If there are any questions I can take up. Okay, question. One, just, okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah, Neil, you are uh, mute. I'm not able oh, to. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's late in the day. So, but but the, the my as I say, my question was, you know, what would be a good place to start or a good project to start for learning more about this field? Uh, okay. Okay. So basically, the problem with uh, cyber forensics is that. Uh, it's one of the neglected uh, areas, so you will not find uh, uh, much resources. Uh, but of course, uh, there are uh, many books. One book I have already mentioned in my uh, talk. So if you want to specifically start with um, uh, Python forensics, then if you are interested in digital forensics, then Tutorials Point website has got some uh, uh, tutorials which you can uh, read free of cost and also work free of cost then if you are interested in uh, professional certificates then ec council has got certificates such as a chfi that is certified hacking forensic uh, investigator then even sans has uh, so many certification agencies are providing professional certifications in this area Um, as we have one more, one more question. Um, that uh, yeah, you, you spoke of a demo. Um, but does that just just get dropped for time? Yeah. Or was... <laughs> yeah, no. So I just included the screenshots because right. I was facing problem at my end. Yeah. Okay. So, but you can refer those uh, screenshots, and if you, you you can easily reproduce them. That's not a problem. All right. Um, just give it a couple of minutes to see if there are any other questions. Sure. See, there's typing going on in Discord. Let's see if that's okay. I, I know, that's a just a, a general um, thank you. All right. Um, in which case, uh, thank you very much again for your talk. It was very informative. Um, and just um, a couple of housekeeping notes that 
a reminder that um, lightning talks missions are still open. So if you wish to uh, give a lightning talk, please um, let us know. Um, and that the you know the, the next talk will be um, next set of talks will be um, starting in sort of um, a little over ten minutes. Um, and see people in those. And thank you very much for attending. And thank you again for the thank you again to our speaker. So end the recording here for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Neil. And also, I thank uh, the organizers of PyCon ZA for giving me an opportunity to uh, speak. Thank you.